Good morning. Um, just like a lot of people, uh, I, I entered GE over uh, 23 years ago. I started, um, I'm operations leader today for the new energy storage business. But I started at GE with uh, my uh, two-year technical degree. Um, I started that, I joined the GE apprentice program at the time, and then, uh, and then it was all upon myself, on what I could make of myself once I entered the GE business. And uh, followed up with getting my four-year degree while I was there. And uh, 20 some years later, I'm here as operations leader. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, energy storage business. So how did GE get into the battery business? So this is something that's been on the shelf, uh, GE at the Global Research Center here in this day unit, uh, for a long time. And uh, it's been uh, around the world, uh, a developing product for well over 40 years. And uh, the, the issue has always been, how do you produce it at the right cost? And that's been the big driver over all the years. It's been on the shelf, off the shelf, on the shelf, on the shelf. And we've been going back and forth. And it's just that the timing is right. Um, the technology is there. We have the ability to do it. And uh, we started it for a lot of different reasons. Um, when we take a look at what uh, GE is about, uh, GE is a, is a big business. So we're, we're around the world. We're, um, we're in energy. We're in transportation. We've got health care. Um, we're a big business. We started the, taking a look at the battery first as a hybrid project on uh, the locomotive. So uh, in the early 2000s, I was on a project taking a look at uh, the locomotive and the hybrid. And we started taking a look at how we can convert it. And we got our first hybrid locomotive running. Um, everything was moving along well, but not enough volume to really start that business. So as we took a look, we started taking a look around all the other GE businesses. How do we make this a viable business? And we took a look at it um, starting in 2001, again with the, the look at the hybrid. Where were we going to get the technology? Where were we going to get the expertise? And uh, we really looked throughout the GE business, both uh, domestically and globally. And in uh, 2007, we actually uh, purchased a company that was in the United Kingdom called Beta Research and Development. Um, it was our acquisition that we felt we needed to make to, to own the technology or have the expertise of that technology within the GE business. So we combined that with our expertise at GRC to really formalize a launch plan for this battery business. And in 2009, with the commitment of Jeff Immel, uh, we made that decision to launch the business. Um, so what exactly is um, G Energy Storage and what do we sell? Um, the component that we have is the cell. So the cell on the left-hand side is really the heart of what this battery is about. So we make battery modules consisting of an array of those cells. And we sell them into uh, either in single components or we sell them into systems. And what we're looking for is really um, an energy storage device that companies can use to, to take the storage that they're utilizing as backup energy um, in case they, they have loss of operation. Um, where will it be manufactured? Um, right here in Schenectady. So there was a lot of decision making about it. I'm, I'm from Erie, Pennsylvania. I'm part of the transportation group. I moved up here over three years ago to be part of this business. And from a, from a location standpoint, uh, this area made sense uh, because of the closest to the technology center here at GRC. Uh, we had our sister company, GE Energy, and it made sense to be here on site. If we take a look at it right now, um, we have started operations in the factory at the beginning of this year. Uh, we've got 190,000 square foot plant of manufacturing. Over 70% of our factory is set up just to produce ceramics in our cell. It's a big portion of it, and the technology and equipment goes with it. It's high investment dollars, but it also requires a skill level of people uh, that we're looking for that's not necessarily out there today. So we're, we're, we're homegrowing that, those individuals internally today. We're hiring, hopefully, the right candidates. We're bringing them in, and we're doing that training internally. So we're looking for some um, key skills. Um, the math and sciences, as it was explained uh, earlier, is, is very important. Also, good communication skills. Um, when we take a look at how are we going to, how are we going to win in the market? How are we going to be number one in this market? It's a 
our competitiveness. And we are, we are looking at all the different ways. Um, we have uh, what we call a continuous improvement culture. We're constantly looking, even in the startup phase, how are we going to improve this product? How are we going to improve the process that we make this product so we can be competitive globally? And it's a big deal. And so what we look for is not only math and sciences, but good, pe but good people that can communicate as well. And so it's a big deal because it's a team environment. We have hourly team leaders. We have groups. They're making decisions every day. It's not necessarily a supervisor that's driving, driving what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're really looking for key, smart individuals. Um, as we take a look at it, there's a big investment here in, the, in this factory. It's over $160 million uh, overall that will be invested. Um, we're about uh, one-eighth of the way at uh, uh, installing our capacity at the factory and, um, and making our first batteries today. So we've been uh, making batteries since the beginning of the year and now we're working uh, towards uh, getting ready to uh, uh, ship our first commercial batteries. So who's going to buy a drug lot? Uh, right now, when we got into this market, it was a hybrid battery. As we found, we couldn't launch commercially with the low volume for the hybrid market at the time. So we found that we had, the device that we had was a good energy storage device. And as we went out to the, the markets of the world to find where else should we be, what other markets should we be in, we found that we, our battery and our technology was a good, technology to displace lead acid batteries. So if we take a look at it, one of the uh, big opportunities we had was in the telecom business. So if we take a look at it along the top of the screen here, where we're going to be is telecom. So think about cell phones, cell towers. All the cell towers out there in the world have some sort of backed up power, backed up storage, so they have batteries. So what we're taking a look at is displacing where lead acid batteries are today with our technology. UPS, uninterruptible power supply. So hospitals, computer centers, any critical business technology centers that need backup power have backup battery storage power. We're looking at displacing those. So we believe we have the advantage over lead acid battery in that case as well. And then the other one is really distributed storage and substation storage. So you hear a lot about um, in the events of how much it costs them power during the day versus at night, we have the ability in our utility area of the business to create megawatt stations of these uh, batteries and actually store power overnight and then distribute during the day with our technology. The other areas that we're still looking into, we're still in the hybrid market, we're still looking at that and we will do that when it makes sense. We're also taking a look at commercial vehicles and also in the forefront business as well. So what are the advantages? And this is why we, we've gotten into a lot of the markets that we have. Um, our life cycles. Um, right now, um, in, in a competitive world, um, we offer a long life battery. Right now, um, plus, plus 15 years. So it's a big deal. Uh, no maintenance. So that no one has to go check on these batteries. No one has to go to the cell stations. No one has to go to the computer centers. No one has to manage them every day. Um, extreme temperature. Our battery runs at 300 degrees Celsius internal temperature. It's hot, but it's only plus or minus 10 to 15 on the outside. So with our with our technology and insulation technology that we have, um, it really allows us to take this energy storage device and put it in extreme temperatures. When you take a look at uh, lead acid battery today, anyone that's this in this area know that lead acid in cold weather doesn't do well. People have gone out and start their car in a cold morning. I know you've got issues um, with, our, with our battery, those extreme temperatures, it doesn't matter. So we're very good in the non-temperate zone. So where it's very, very hot or very, very cold, we're going to compete very, very well because we're going to offer a battery that has a very long life cycle compared to the short life cycles that you're going to see with lead acid batteries. Um, high energy density. Um, all that means is I've got more power or more energy for the footprint that they have currently have lead acid battery in today. So we have a higher energy battery. Um, minimal maintenance is really no maintenance. Um, we have remote monitoring for all our batteries. And with the remote monitoring, our BMS, which is our battery management system, that really helps us monitoring 
and then it also prevents for any uh, issues that may occur, spikes in energy that they get, any type of things that would outside influence do that energy storage, we can monitor and we can correct for it. And then um, just the recycling portion about it. Um, right now, we've got, a, we've got a company that we work with, and um, we're 99% recycling on So everything, whenever every battery runs to its end of its life, um, it can be returned, and it can be fully recycled through that. So it's, it's a battery, you know, we like to say we make it out of dirt. It's, it's earth materials, and we're just really returning it. So it's, a, it's, a, it's very friendly uh, to the environment as far as recycling goes. And uh, where, where on the other side of lead acid, maybe not so much, it's a higher cost to recycle. So, the stationary power needs to be an emerging market. So this really shows um, where we would do well. And this is where we're actually taking a look at it. And two things. One, where we have the temperature zones that are extreme, and where also there is no grid. So they have a weak power, power generation system, weak grid system. Uh, can't supply power consistently, and they're always looking for that backup. So it's the perfect market for us in the battery because of our high energy storage. So high energy storage just means that we have we can store our energy longer, and then utilize it longer during a longer period of time for them. And um, and we're finding we our demos out there have been very successful before our launch, and um, all of our customers are within these zones at this time. So launch status. So uh, my boss likes to say that uh, as fast as we've gone to market with this battery, uh, over a year ago, uh, January of last year, we had a third floor in Schenectady. So we're producing batteries today. He likes to call it three planes landing at once on one runway. It's uh, really, can you get the factory ready in time at the right cost? Can I get the product validation in time for the customers? And can I fill the order book so I have some orders to do when I launch? Those are the key things that I've got. And, uh, and what does that mean to GE? It means to what we've been able to do is really take something off the shelf and really develop into uh, new markets. And that's where we stand today. So. Um, so I think the biggest thing that we've got as we take a look at it from an hourly associate standpoint, we're at 103 hourly associates we have currently on board. I have 104 exempts in our business today. We're going from 104 exempts up to 150. We're going from 103 hourly to 300 at full, full, full growth. Things that we're looking for, uh, things that are key to us. People in some of our lower hourly, um, our lower hourly roles are, listen, it's math, sciences, shop classes, it's the technical skills. Um, that, that's a lower rate position we have. Associate degree, technology degree, that, that's more of our mid-level. And then associate degree with experience, that takes you up to the higher level. We also have, um, and that probably takes us into a range of about $15 to $22 an hour job um, at our shop. Um, we take a look at some of the technical degrees, the technical associate degree plus um, experience um, or technical degree working on. Um, we have some of our entry level supervisory roles that start at the 45, 45,000 range and go up to 65,000 range. So technology is where it's at. We're looking hard for it. Um, we're, we're having some success. We'd like to have more. Um, but um, it's, it's very key to get more people out there looking at those, uh, like I said, the math and sciences and in those technology uh, degrees. So. Thank you, Mary. Okay, now it's my pleasure to introduce. Uh, introduce